I'm John Gilhouse. I am a curator at the Academy in Natural Sciences of Drexel University, but I'm also a professor in the Biodiversity, Earth, and Environmental Science Department of Drexel University. And we're out here today just kind of exploring how to kind of look for and survey insects. So I study a group of flies called crane flies, which are very diverse as are most insect groups. So insects encompass probably eight to 10 million species in the world. We've now described about a million. So we have a lot more work to do there. Just the group called crane flies are about 15,000 described species. And I would say there's at least that many undescribed that scientists have never studied. When I'm out collecting, I take a variety of tools. The main one is right here and that's this insect net, which allows me to net the insects, look at them in the net, decide what I wanna do with it. Do I wanna just look at the insect? Do I wanna take it as a specimen? Or maybe I just wanna let it go. So this is an aspirator and it works very simply. I suck in air, sucks in through here. The insect goes in here and into the container here. As you can see, there are already some here. There was a crane fly just flew up on that leaf underneath, so I'm gonna go like that. And another one. Oh, there's one of my guys right here. This crane fly just flew right here, female. But I was looking at this jumping spider has grabbed one of those um, these march flies that are flying and hovering around but it's grabbed one and it's feeding it feeding right now on that milkweed okay so she's in here now you can see just all the spittle bugs it's just everywhere where you look little white things of foam Incredible. This is quite a large species. Her abdomen is very soft. So we would call her tenoral. That means the exoskeleton hasn't quite hardened up. And she comes out with a fully developed abdomen of eggs. So she's just waiting to mate. So this is, uh, uh, I've got three individuals of a crane fly, tri the genus Trisophona, um, which is actually a project I'm working on right now. So I'm happy to get these as records to study what species they are. And they were swept just in this low area here. I didn't see them, but they were in this vegetation here. All right, so I've collected a few crane flies and I'm gonna do a little bit of what we call field preparation that will make them better specimens before I leave this site. So for crane flies, we use these little envelopes here. And because they've got these long legs that stick out everywhere and tend to break off very easily, it's nice to put them in a place as specimens where they'll be in basically a single plane and those legs aren't sticking out everywhere. So that's what I'm gonna do here. So. I keep field notes, so I usually will write at least my new, whatever the field note number is for this site. And so I'm gonna put that on right here. So I'll write Gill House, and this is 1765. And I will put the site name as an additional reminder for myself. So I've got my envelopes with enough notation that I can figure out where I was at. Now I'm gonna take the specimens that I have in the kill jar and we're gonna put them in these envelopes. So we'll dump them out here. So then what I'm gonna do is I take the crane fly and I'm gonna to try to just gently tuck the legs in a little bit and then slide it in this envelope. And I can tuck several others in the envelope. So once I have them in this envelope, I just gently close it like that. 
This goes into this container and the specimens are well protected. Since I'm at a museum, I often think about why it is important to collect, particularly insects. And that's because museum collections are a repository for a lot of information about species that we would get no other way. The Academy of Natural Sciences collections are what we consider world-class. All kinds of organisms are preserved in the Academy's collections. They sample most groups of organisms, from fish to birds to insects to mollusks to microscopic algae. So I always am thinking about what specimens are going to be useful for me now in my research, but also for those researchers five years from now, decades from now, 200 years from now. And so specimens are vitally important to continue to record the biodiversity on Earth. Once we get back from the field, we start the process of preparing the specimens by pinning or other means and getting them ready for study and then eventually into the museum collection. What that entails is us thinking about how we're going to prepare these specimens. So the most common preparation that we do for insects is to pin them. And I have everything laid out here um, just to kind of show you. This is my field pinning box that I carry with me when I'm going out. I need to prepare specimens out in the field, and it includes everything that I need for preparing those specimens, including various sizes of pins here, uh, forceps, scissors, pens, a pinning block, and some uh, paper points for particular insects, and then glue. This box right here is uh, my field pin box. I can look in here and see where I recently was. When we field pin insects, we'll put a temporary label for the first one. That gives us enough information that we know where those insects were collected from. Then when we get back in the lab, we can prepare a set of printed labels that will go on every one of these specimens that will tell us where the specimens were collected, when, who was the collector, and other information such as was it collected at a light or sweeping a certain plant. If you want to develop a collection, you want to uh, share a specimen with somebody, you can just put the insect in a container in your freezer. That's a quick way of killing it. In this case, I was using a killing agent in the field, but these then have been preserved in the freezer so that they can be easily thawed out when I'm ready to pin them and they don't dry. So these will be as flexible as they were when they were first collected. Okay, so I'm gonna take this uh, snipe fly here and we're going to pin it. So there's a process for that as well. Many people don't realize there are a lot of different widths of pin. So a thickness of the pin is important because too thick of a pin will pretty much destroy the insect body. Too thin of a pin won't hold the, the insect uh, on the pin very well. So we have a, quite a full range of pins from what we call the triple zeros, which are the thinnest and most flexible, all the way up to number fours. The number fours are very thick and strong. And then we have these paper triangles called points. So for this snipe fly, uh, I would say a two is probably good. Okay, so I'm gonna take the fly like this. And for flies and many insects, you want to pin not in the middle of the thorax. The thorax is that middle section of the body. You want to pin just to the right of that. Since insects are the same on both sides of the body, we call them bilaterally symmetrical. So we'll pin it on one side, which gives us a full view of what the middle of the thorax looks like, as well as one, one of the sides, okay? So we've got it pinned, but we need to 
put it up on the pin so that we can handle it easily, but also give room for labels to go underneath it. So that's what we use here, which is called a pinning block. And it's got these pinholes here with depth here. Okay, so this fly, we want to put it at the highest level. So I find the pinhole and I go down and put it at that level. Okay? So now I've got this snipe fly, golden back snipe fly, beautiful. The legs are hanging down. However you wanted to use the specimen, you may want that. But for studying insects, we tend to want to compact them so that those pieces don't get broken off. So what I'm going to do is I just get some uh, foam here. This is a soft foam. And so then I pin it down like that. And then I can take my field label here, which tells me where these insects are from. So you can see Pennsylvania Chester County, Rushton Woods Preserve, uh, June 8th, 2021. And then me as collector, John Gelhaus, 1768 is my field number, which would link to my field notes. So then I want to keep that association. So I can take that, take one of the stronger pins, and pin it here. And then I can go ahead and um, go ahead and do the rest of the specimens in the container. So once the specimens are pinned, they're studied and identified, and then they can be added into the museum collection. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed seeing the process from sampling in the field to preparation of the specimens so that they can be added into the museum collection.